So we're going to be solving some trig equations here. Um, and this worksheet uh, is in the, uh, I think, week four module. Um, notice the front side says to solve them on from 0 to 2 pi. And then the back side of the equation, or worksheet, says to give all answers um, and to give exact answers where you can. So we'll start off on this one here, number one. First thing you always do is solve the equations is to get the, in this case, cosine by itself. So I divide by three, so that would be cosine of two x is equal to one third. And then the next step is to um, have to undo the cosine. So, you know, we're really just do, doing a series of inverse operations. The inverse operation of multiplied by three is divide by three. Um, and the inverse operation of cosine, of course, is arc cosine. So I'm going to take arc cosine of both sides, and that leaves me with 2x on this side. And on the other side, it leaves me with second cosine, 1 divided by 3, um, approximately 1.2309. Now, of course, it does say give exact answers when possible, but I but I can't give an exact answer here, exact answer here because it's not a friendly angle. So um, now, um, of course, we're not done because that tells us what two x is equal to, and we actually want to know what x is equal to. So we know for sure that if we divide both sides by two, we'll get one of our answers. So we know that x has to be equal to um, point and I should say approximately equal to, because I'm rounding at this point, 0.6154. Okay, now how do we find the other ones? Well, if you think about this for a second, the two on the inside, if you remember what that does in graphing, it scrunches the um, period of the cosine up. So if we understand what that means, that that means it's going to be cycling faster than normal. So that means there's going to be more answers in this little interval between 0 and 2 pi. I think the easiest way to do it is because you guys are really, at this point, good at unit circle. You know that 1.2309 is somewhere in here in the first quadrant. And we know that cosine is positive in the first quadrant. It's also positive in the fourth quadrant, so that means the other answer that goes with this would be right there. Um, now, how do we find that other answer? Well, um, you could call it negative. Well, the one thing we know is that this angle and that angle are the same measure. So you could call it negative 1.2309, but that wouldn't work because I want to be in this interval, and negative is below zero, right? So I'd have to go with 2 pi minus 1.2309. Because you can see if I go all the way around to 2 pi and then come back 1.2309, I will get to this spot here. Okay. But of course, I'd have to divide that by 2 also because this is refining the area what's equal to 2x. So that would mean that this guy would be pi minus 0.6154. Now, if we were to keep going on this, we could find more by just adding 2 pi to everything, right? So if we add 2 pi to that, of course, we would get, um, we would get 2 pi plus 1.2309. So that would be like adding 2 pi to this would take us all the way around the circle and back to here. So, um, but of course, if I divide that by 2, we get pi plus 0.6154. Um, and that is still between 0 and 2 pi. So what if we add 2 pi to this one? That would give us 4 pi minus 1.2309. Of course, if we divide that by 2, we would get 2 pi minus 0.6154. Again, we'd first try to get this, in this case, secant by itself. So that would be secant of 
x over 2 is equal to 1 half. Now before we get any further, let's stop and think about this for a second. Again, I have some, a number on the inside. If we, if we remember that in terms of graphing, dividing by 2 on the inside would stretch the period out. So this is going to have fewer answers than normal in that uh, 0 to 2 pi range. Okay, but, um, and also notice the secant. Uh, we don't know what secant is uh, as far as, um, we, there's not a secant button on the calculator. Um, so when I see something involving secant, I rewrite it as cosine of x over 2. But I'd have to flip this thing so it's 2 over 1. Because if I flip secant to get cosine, i got to flip 1 half to get 2. So then we end up with cosine of x over 2 equals 2. And if you were to throw it in your calculator, you're going to get an error. But hopefully, you've been picking up on this now that uh, I wouldn't even attempt to put it in my calculator. Because this is saying, when is cosine equal to 2? And we know that the basic cosine curve starts at 1, goes down to negative 1, back up to 1, down to negative 1, back up to 1. Never gets up here to 2, right? So we would stop right now and say no solution. Okay. Number three. Number three is a tricky one um, because we got sine and cosine mixed, and we got a 2x in there when it's just x there, so that's a troublesome. Um, so uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. This is one. Of, this is one that you could try to do some algebra stuff, and you might make some headway. But um, this is one that's not going to be solvable algebraically. So um, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have a solution. It just means it can't be solved algebraically. So what you can do is take out your calculator, take out the graphing, um, open up the graph or the y equals, and just type in um, two sine two x close parenthesis cosine x close parenthesis plus cosine x close parenthesis and then I go down to y2 and type in 1. So basically what I'm saying is I'm going to graph this side and then graph that side and see where they intersect each other. So if I hit graph right now I get an interesting graph. I get this kind of a wavy graph that looks like this. Then you see the y equals 1 going across like this. So you can see that there's a series of answers there. Uh, the y-axis is something like that. All right. So, um, and then we can go to our calculators. Um, if you go second trace, it's a calc. And then you have a bunch of options. One of them is intersect. So I go down to intersect and press enter. And it asks me if I'm this is the first curve. And I say yes. And then it says second curve. And I say yes by pr pressing enter both times. That's why I say yes. Um, and then it says take a guess. So I'm going to, on my calculator, going to going to guess right about there. So, oh, whoops, I miss. Right about there, because that's where the um, y equals 1 look like it's crossing. So I take a guess, and it says intersection 0, 1. So one of the options is x equals 0. Okay? So x equals 0. Now, then I'm going to do the second trace again and go down to intersect. And it'll say first curve, and I'll say yes by pressing enter. Second curve, and I'll say yes by pressing enter. Then I'll guess, and this time I'm going to move the cursor over to that spot there. And press enter. And it says, wait for it, x equals 1.15. Five. 
And I'm pretty sure that one is going to be bigger than 2 pi. I'll scroll over it just to make sure, but it's a ways over there. Yeah, I'm already at uh, 4.89. Oh, maybe not. Let's see. 6.38. And if, if I remember, 6.38. Uh, 2 times pi would be 6.28. So it's just a little bit bigger than 2 pi. So these would be my only answers here. Okay, we're doing okay so far. So number four, um, again, you got to get cotangent by itself. So I'd subtract 2 from both sides and get a 4 there, divide by 3. So that would be cotangent of x over 3 is equal to 4 thirds. I don't have a cotangent button on my calculator, so I'm going to change this to tangent x over 3. And that means I've got to flip this over, so that would be 3 fourths. So then I'm taking second tan of 3 divided by 4, and I get x over 3, because when I take inverse tangent, it just undoes the tangent, but leaves the 3. So the x over 3 is equal to 0.644. Right? Now we know with tangent, it comes every pi, right? So if 0.644 works, then every if I add pi to that over and over again, it'll give me all the other answers. But remember, I'm dividing by 3 over here, so I've got to multiply both sides by 3. So I'm going to take my original answer and multiply by 3. And that gives me x equals um, 1.931. And now, if I want to get another answer here, um, instead of adding pi each time, I'd actually be adding 3 pi, because you know this, this um, stretches everything out. So if I add 3 pi to that, of course, it's going to be bigger than 2 pi. So I stop right there and say, that's my answer. Okay, let's do number 5. Uh, 2 secant 2x. So I divide both sides by 2, and I get secant 2x is equal to 1 half. Um, hey, that's the same problem I just did, isn't it? Oh no, it's a 2 inside instead of 1 half, but it's the same issue because uh, that means that cosine of 2x is equal to 2, and that's impossible. So no solution. How about this one? Cosecant squared. So that would be cosecant squared of 2x is equal to 4. Now I square root both sides, and I get cosecant of 2x Square root of 4, of course, is plus or minus 2. So I'm saying, when is cosecant equal to 2? Well, that would be when sine is equal to plus or minus 1 half. So that means that 2x would be equal to, let's see, sine is equal to 1 half. If I go to the unit circle, that would be there and there and there and there. That's all the pi over 6s, isn't it? So that would be pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6 and uh, 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. And I could add a 2 pi to any one of those. But of course, I still have a 2 over here. So I could divide everything by 2. So that would be x equals pi over 12, 5 pi over 12, Oops, over 12 I said. Uh, 7 pi over 12 and 11 pi over 12. But there's going to be more. I could keep going. So if I add, essentially, instead of having, I could add 2 pi to pi over 6 and divide by 2, or I could add 2 pi, or I could add pi to pi over 12. So that would be uh, 13 pi pi over 12, and I could add pi to this guy, so that would be 18 pi over 12. I could add pi to um, that guy, that would be um, 
19 pi over 12. And I could add pi to that guy. And that would be uh, 23 pi over 12. And I know that 24 pi over 12 would be 2 pi. So I, I've just, I think I've hit my limit there. So that would be all my answers. Okay, here's a good one. It got a tangent squared in it um, and a secant. That's no good um, because I, I don't want to deal with mixed um, trig functions. I either want it all tangent or all secant. Since this is tangent squared, I can easily change it um, to secant. So, so we know from the identity sheet that um, tangent squared is equal to secant squared minus 1. So I'm going to replace that. So this would be 2 times uh, secant squared minus 1 minus 3 secant plus 3 equals 0. So that would give me um, 2 secant squared. Uh, 2 times negative 1 would be negative 2 plus 3 would be plus 1. And then we have a minus 3 secant here equals 0. So then I'd want to factor that if it's factorable, which I think it is actually. Let's see, 2 and 1 would add up to negative 3 if they're both negative. Yeah, so I think I can go, I can go uh, 2 secant x and secant x and 1 and 1 and minus and minus. So that means 2 secant x minus 1 is equal to 0 or secant x minus 1 is equal to 0. So this would be secant x is equal to 1 half, which we know doesn't work because that means cosine is equal to 2. So you can cross that one out. Or secant x is equal to 1. Of course, secant x would be equal to 1 when cosine is equal to 1. So that would be x equals 0 and 2 pi. Okay, so number eight is kind of a tricky one. You, you're not going to have to do a bunch of math. You just got to, well, you got to do math in your head and think about this. If I divide both sides by two, I get sine x times cosine x equals one. So I'm asking when is sine times cosine equal to one? Now keep in mind that sine never gets bigger than one and cosine never gets bigger than one. So the only way that sine times cosine would be equal to one would be if they're both one. Um, and sine and cosine are never one at the same time, so this would be a no solution.